This is the most visited museum on planet Earth. Eight to ten million visitors a year come here. Um, what's the name of this place? Air and Space Museum? No. There are many Air and Space Museums. This is the National Air and Space Museum, the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. Who owns this place? You do. This is your museum. And so if 8 to 10 million visitors from all over planet Earth come here every year, there's got to be something special about this place. And so maybe the way to start off telling this story is to ask you all a question. If I had the ability to give you all the power to fly just by snapping my fingers, how many of you would do that? Raise your hands high. You would, you would not. How about if it was safe? Would you do it then? I snap my fingers and you're able to fly. How many of you would do that? Why? Why would you do that? Because it's fun? Because you've never done it before? And if I were to go to any nation on the face of this earth and address an audience just like this one, ask the exact same question in Japan, in Kenya, in Australia, what would they say? They'd raise their hands too. And if I could magically transport myself 2,000 years into the past and ask a group just like this one the same question, if I could snap my fingers and I'd give you the power of flight, how many would do that? What do you think they would say? They would say yes too. And so the point I'm trying to make here is that there are dreams, human dreams, that transcend space and time, that know no national boundaries, that are a thread that binds us through the ages. And this museum is a celebration of those dreams of flight and air and space. And I, I guess another way to say this in a more personal way is, uh, let me ask you a series of questions and I'm gonna give you the answer to the first question so you see how this game is played, okay? So the question is, where did you come from? And the answer is your mom and dad. Well, where did your mom and dad come from? Their mom and dad, which are your grandparents. And where did your grandparents come from? their mom and dad, which are your great-grandparents. And how far back does this go? Thousands upon thousands of generations. You are the product of thousands upon thousands of generations. How many of you know something about your great-grandparents? Raise your hands. What about, raise your hands high. Let's see what happens here. How many of you know something about your great-great-great-great-grandparents? Great-great-great-great-grandparents, four. Raise your hands high. Hands are, have come down. How many of you know something about your great, 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 great grandparents? Ten. Two. Two people in this group. Which is kind of sad because we're talking about tens of thousands of human generations that gave rise to you and you can't tell me anything about ten generations ago. That's kind of sad that we don't know where we came from. But what's comforting is to recognize that all of those tens of thousands of generations that gave rise to you are in you now. They're in your genetic code. They're in you now. Because if they weren't in you, you would not be here. You are their legacy. And I know, I, I am certain of it, that tens of thousands of generations ago, your ancestors may have gone out on a cloudless day a beautiful day on a grassy field, looked up into the sky and saw birds at play and asked the fundamental question, what would it be like to fly like the birds? What would it be like to have that freedom to look down on earth from above, to soar in the air, to look at a branch 200 feet up and say, I'd like to sit there and look down on earth. What would it be like to fly like the birds? And when the sun set on that cloudless day, and the stars came out, I know that your ancestors may have laid down on that grassy field, looked heavenward and said, what would it be like to go to the moon? What would it be like to go to those points of light in the sky? And every generation grabbed onto that dream and every generation never let it go. And every generation grew frail. And when they grew frail, they reached down to the children and hoisted them up on their shoulders and said, I have gone as far as I can to keep this dream alive. It's now your turn. And be content in knowing that everything that I have learned in my lifetime, I give to you freely. 
All of the things that past generations have given to me, I pass on to you freely. It's your turn to take the human race where we have never been before. And every generation recognized that, that mission. Every generation added to the book of knowledge. Every generation toiled in quest of those dreams. Every generation grew frail and passed it on to the next. Until finally, in December of 1903, something really remarkable happened. Anybody know what happened in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, December 17th, 1903? 